Back here, configuring my systems on my non-front home grid. I've already configured and installed the kernels. I have the plan9.ini boot configuration files. Once the kernels does its initial boot process and jumps to user space, RC and a bunch of RC scripts are run to finalize the configuration. These scripts can do the typical Unix things of launching various programs. And for Plan 9 systems, it's also very important to keep in mind the configuration of the namespace. So first I will cover starting programs with the scripts and then building custom namespaces to be run at startup. So this is the fork in the road where the machine can continue to boot as a terminal, which is a machine set up for human interaction with a mouse monitor and keyboard, or it will be set up as a CPU server, which will skip the graphical setup and instead set up interaction by providing services over the network. At this point in the boot process, the file server or local disk access is already set up. So we are now just reading the standard files from the file system. The two files for the configuration are termrc here and cpurc, and both are located in RC bin. Uh, the two scripts are very similar to each other. Uh, the big difference is basically at the end of the script. So here on term RC, we see that there's going to be a screen RC for setting up the mouse and the graphics. And near the end of the CPU RC, it's going to be setting up the uh, listeners on the network. So we got either listen for CPU and auth or just listen for a plain CPU server. Now these are your files on your storage and you can modify them as you'd like, but it may conflict with system updates. So the scripts provide several points. Uh, it checks for outside files and runs additional configurations on them. So here we can see it's going to test if there's a config for the sysname on CPU start. And at the very top, it'll look for site specific startup script and RC bin called that and then soon after that it will also here we go check for a cpu rc under sysname in the config directory and the same applies for uh, term rc it has very similar stops in the uh, process where it will check for uh, any sort of a uh, local configuration you might want to do there's like the config sysname term rc So as an example here, I'm running this here. This is a uh, Raspberry Pi 3B. It's running as a terminal. The lightning bolt shows up every once in a while to tell me I'm not getting enough power to it. Um, the thing about the Raspberry Pi is that they don't have a built-in clock with a battery to store the time and date. The uh, default termrc script, you see here at the top, has this time sync args, and it will save those and then feed them to time sync later on. And this is set to read the local clock and assume it's set to a local time of a certain accuracy. Now before it runs time sync, it will check to see if it's already running. Um, so here it is, PS grep is gonna look for time sync. And if it's not running, it will run it. Um, so to fix the time on the Raspberry Pi, I go to where it checks for the specific term RC and I write my own. Where did I stick that? Here it is. So since that runs before it checks for time sync, because that's all the way up here, it will run it here. So in there, I tell it to run time sync. And with this dash in means it will just go and fetch it from the default uh, NTP server. Uh, the effect is now my Raspberry Pi has the proper date and time uh, when it boots up. I have a similar situation on the CPU server uh, side of things. So I have, put this back up. I have a Raspberry Pi set up as a CPU server again. It doesn't store time, but I've wired into it a GPS unit with a battery that can fetch the time from the GPS satellites. Uh, Plan 9's time sync program is written to talk to the GPS file system that Plan 9 also has and fetch the time. Um, I did have to uh, run a modified version of uh, 
GPSF or GPSFS. Um, I had to make it read uh, data from satellites other than the American GPS ones, but otherwise it behaves like the standard GPSFS. So now the CPU RC does not try to um, fetch time from the built-in clock. Let's see here. It's So instead, it tries to uh, fetch it from the default um, NTP um, server. And if there is not one already in your uh, NDB, um, it will go to this public one. Um, like TermRC, it checks first to see if TimeSync is running. Um, right here. So, so it's doing that, um, I can just run time sync first. And that way this one's running, pulling the time from the GPS satellites. Um, and it will ignore doing this one here. Uh, one of the things I can also have it do is with this little dash S is have it set up a network listener on a specific uh, networking stack to provide local time as a time server. So I do that and in my network database, I set this, that um, Pi to be the local NTP server. So when I boot my Raspberry Pi terminal, it's able to get the uh, time from my Raspberry Pi server. So during the boot process, a program is run called init really early on. And one of the things it runs is this new NS function. Uh, that is part of the lib auth library. And it's going to um, load the default namespace recipe from lib namespace. So again, you know, these are your files. You can modify them as you please. Um, but at the bottom here, it does have spots where you can run either grid specific or system specific namespaces. So again, the, specific, the system specific ones are gonna be in config, sysname, namespace. So back on my Raspberry Pi server here, um, that's a lab Pi. Um, I've had several devices add to it. The drivers for those devices were done in the plan nine style. So they provide access to the devices via files. Uh, but those files are not part of the default namespace. In order to make them normally accessible to anyone accessing the CPU server, I added a system-specific namespace recipe. So that things like, well, first I start off with um, this J device, which is the I squared C bus, because a bunch of these devices access that. Um, the LCD display and the CO2 sensor are wired into that, um, but, you know, their access is files, they're not included by default, and um, they read from the J device to then get information, either read that, they'll read the, uh, the sensor to get data, and they send data out to the little uh, LCD display. Um, next are various drivers that have been, uh, or even started at boot, like the, uh, the GPS one. And then I've also added the uh, Wiz light bulb controller I made, which also shows up in files. So if I actually log in over there, H MPI. If I just look in mount, I will see there's the Wiz light bulb files the sensor for the CO2 and temperature, the LCD, and GPS. I previously did a video where I set up additional ports on the central file server, because the one I bought came with four Ethernet ports. Um, and this was to do a Plan 9 style network address translation where I mount an outside facing networking port. Um, since this custom port is not part of the default namespace recipe, I also added a system specific one for central so that the additional network stack in net.alt will always show up in net.alt. And now other systems can request it by just asking for the 
um, net.alt from central. So I can import from central net.alt over my net. Let that hook up. And now if I just run the default ping, Google, oops, not pig. Ping. Now I can ping the outside world by just grabbing net.alt from central and putting it my.net. Well, I hope this gives everyone some ideas about how they can go about configuring their own Plan 9 grid. I'll have links down below to various uh, man pages for this sort of stuff. And as usual, have fun.